Hey, thank you so much for joining me today for this low back release and hip releasing practice. It's a shorter practice, but we can get a lot done in the time that we have together. So if you have it, please bring along a block or two and a yoga strap um, and maybe even a blanket. I think it'll be helpful to you. So let's get started. Today, we're going to lie onto our backs and what I'd like you to do is to draw your knees into your chest almost like you're doing a child's pose on your back Apanasana it's a great pose and then with your knees just gently move them in a circle really slow just beginning the process go the other direction of warming up the low back and then back in the first direction almost like mother earth is giving you a little massage on your back so good and then come back through center put your left foot on the floor drape your right ankle across your left leg and then draw your legs towards you so i've interlaced my hands around the back of my left hamstring but if that doesn't feel good um if your shoulders are rounding if your neck is lifting up grab a yoga strap and use that instead okay so here you are and you can rock side to side and let your body begin this process of gently releasing tension gets stuck in all of us and our pelvis and our hips are notorious they are notorious for holding on to to tension so you know we're going to gently release it we're going to gently open it, and it's going to feel great so take your time and don't push yourself. This is a practice that really deeply gives back to you, okay? So flexing your right toes, breathing, drawing your thighs in a little closer, one more breath here. And then listen for change. What you're gonna do is you're gonna keep this figure four configuration, but you're gonna drop the whole thing over to the left. So your right foot will make a touchdown on the floor. Your left outer seam of your thigh and your left foot and shin, the side of your left foot, are also on the floor. Your right knee is still up. Take your left hand, place it in the center of your right thigh, and then gently draw the right leg away from you. This is opening up so as and it's you know the psoas starts at the lowest part of the thoracic spine the vertebrae there and it wraps around over the iliac crest into the groin so what you're doing here is you're encouraging that nice big muscle to let it go let it go us and frozen we're not frozen anymore we're going to be moving and grooving before you know it turn your head gently to the right and give yourself five more breaths here, feeling how the right ribs are trying to move slightly to the right. Inhale. Exhale. Good, keep your breath active. Notice where in your body your breath is. See if you can draw it down deep into your abdomen, inhale. And then as you exhale, place your knees, stack them one on top of each other, tip over onto your left side and extend your right leg out. Now, if you can reach it with your left, if you can reach your toes or your calf with your left hand, great. If you can't, no problem. Take that yoga strap, wrap it around and use that. Now, if you have the yoga strap or if your hand is bent, you want to put your elbow on the floor so that your leg doesn't flop to the floor. No flopping. <laughs> okay, so it's a little more muscular contraction, but it's great because it's going to release the iliotibial band, the IT band. And then again, outstretch your right arm to the right. Draw your shoulder blades in. Feel your right ribs turning to the right. 
Very good. And give yourself a few more breath here. So you're just beginning that process of lengthening through the side of the leg. And this is so important because what it's going to help us do is give back to your body, to the center of your body. The, the pelvis and the hips is where, you know, that is where we have all this intersection between the upper body, the torso, and the lower limbs. And there's a lot of nerve centers there. Um, and it's responsible for a lot. So we're gonna, we're gonna help it. We're gonna give it back. All right, one more breath here. And then bend into both knees. Keep your right arm outstretched. Take your left hand on the top of your uh, knee and then turn your head to the right. Full breath in. Really good. Exhale it out. Come back through center and we're gonna switch. So we're just gonna swap sides. I'm gonna turn around so I can see y'all. And then uh, let's have that left ankle past that right knee. And we'll start in this beautiful supine figure four, which gives you the chance to feel whatever you feel in your body. You don't, don't feel like you gotta be rigid about it. You don't have to hold it in one space. You can sway side to side. You know, so part of yoga your way is making the poses work for you. And um, you know, my husband's grandfather did a lot of work in the Congo and there was a Congolese uh, he was a medical doctor, there was a Congolese uh, expression, and uh, it said, person, person, way, way. You know? So each person has their own way. So find your own way. It's your body, it's your experience. Allow yourself to really have the authority to give to you, to give back to you. Take another two breaths here with the left toes flexing beautifully towards the left knee. And then you're going to drop the left foot all the way over to the right. So you're keeping that figure four configuration. Right hand comes to the center of the left thigh and gently nudges the left thigh away. Left arm is out to the side, left palm to the ceiling. And when you do that, that action of feet on the ground, left ribs opening, you give your body a chance to really release through the chest, open through the chest. Big breath, left ribs turn a little more to the left. One more full breath, inhale. Nice, you guys. Exhale, head comes back through center. Stack your knees, have them stacked. Extend your left leg long. And then you can use either the yoga strap, you could take hold of your left foot, that's obviously more intense, or even the left uh, thigh, or I'm sorry, the left calf. Your left arm opens out to the left, head turns to the left, draw your lumbar spine in. So you're pulling your lumbars in, because it's a twist, but at the same time it's allowing a deeper release of that IT band and when we think about releasing the low back, it has to involve the structures of our legs because they directly feed into the low back. So it's all a good and happy thing. Stay with you. Keep noticing the twist, left ribs, turning to the left, turning to the floor on the left for three more breaths. And then bending the left knee, lying onto your back, swaying side to side again. Really good. And then just go ahead and tip back over onto the right side. So you're lying on the right. Take a yoga strap. Again, if you don't have a strap or if you have the bandwidth and you can take hold of the toes, fine. You're lying on your side though. This is Anahatasana. You can have your right hand underneath your head and I'm going to use demo this with the, the strap here. But um, So to begin, have your right knee bent. And then you can prop yourself up onto your right side and draw your left leg towards you. 
So you can feel how this opens through the inner thigh. There's a little bit of tension in the left arm. There's a bend in the left elbow. It's okay if it's straight, if you have your toes, but if you have the strap, bend the left elbow, draw the leg towards you, and then extend the right leg, if that feels good. Now, that's really kind of wobbly for a lot of us, so you can bend the right knee if that's better, the knee on the bottom. And you're just breathing into the side body, lateral opening, good. So this is so great because it allows the inner thighs to release, which then helps set the pelvis up for uh, letting go. Take three more breaths as you open and spread through your toes, Nice, you guys. Last big breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Really good. Bend into the left knee. Let's swap over. We're going to take the other side. So you're going to lie down on your left side. Take the strap or reach up with your hand. And then a bend into the left knee for support. Put your left hand underneath your head. You certainly can drop it entirely. And then draw the right toes towards your head. So that doesn't matter how far you go. It really has nothing to do with it. What we're after is a letting go in the thigh, in the inner groin. So feel for that. You're looking for that. And then you can stay there or extend the left leg long. And let your left toes, your right toes rather, point towards your head. And noticing that even being in the pose for several breaths, already there's a letting go. We could talk about the receptors and your muscles that are responsible for letting go. They, they hang on for about 30 seconds or so. And then, then they start to let go. And that's when you get this beautiful true lengthening. So give yourself three more breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Enjoying the stretch, letting go through the whole upper neck, upper back body, even in the pose that's releasing the lower body. One more breath, inhale. Really good, exhale, bend the right knee and lie back onto your back for a moment. So pulling your knees into your chest, and opening your knees out to the side, kind of like a almost happy baby, like a, a happy toddler, I don't know. Maybe sway side to side. So again, it's inner groin. One more breath here. And then knees come towards one another. Let's rock it up to seated. So here's where a blanket can come in handy. Um, I don't love the feeling of my knees on the mat if I'm going to be on there in any, for any amount of time. So grab a blanket and you're going to take uh, blocks on either side of you. And then you'll be standing on your shins. So you know, your knees are down, tops of your feet are down, right hand reaches for the block at the tallest setting on the right side and then lift up and over with your left bicep. So you're stretching the whole outer embankment, the lateral sheath on the left side, draw the pelvis forward, engage your glutes, breathe, you're opening up even through the obliques, a beautiful pose. Three more breaths. Last one, inhale, and slowly come up, and we're going to the other side, left hand down, right one up and over. Again, you're drawing pelvis forward. Even though the pelvis is forward, the inner thighs spiral back behind you. It's kind of funny, but if you work it, you'll see what I'm talking about and why it's valuable. So you're releasing QL, you're allowing the muscles of the lower back to let go. Three more breaths. Last big breath here, inhale. Very nice, exhale, come on up. We're gonna move into a modified cat-cow. 
situation. I'm just gonna leave the blanket there, do what feels right for you. Inhale, you lift head, heart, and tail. Drop the thoracic spine into you. Pull your chest forward. Exhale, you'll round your spine. Toes join, and knees are out. Lift up into the cow portion, cat cow, or the cat portion rather, and then drop it into child's pose. Full breath in child's. Exhale in child's. Inhale, lifting up into the cat, the cow portion. I'm mixing these puppies up today. Exhale, cow, lift up and pull it back into your child's pose, full breath in, long breath out, one more time, inhale, reach, lift, exhale, round, and right into child's. Now in child's pose, walk your hands all the way over to the left, all the way over, reach, 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 feel the stretch more through the right hand, so as the right hand moves away more, you'll feel that in the under arm and even in serratus anterior, drop your head. And then go back through center and we'll go to the other side. So left hand walks all the way away, all the way away. Keep reaching, keep reaching, left hand. And even another quarter inch. Drop your head, one more full breath. Very nice, exhale, come back through center, roll over your toes, downward facing dog, knees can stay bent. You could scoot your blanket off the mat if you like. Take a full breath here. Exhale the breath out. Inhale, heels are slightly out, exhale. In fact, walk your feet to the edges of your mat and bend your knees and lift your heels. That's gonna give you length through your spine. Full breath in, long breath out. Shake your head side to side. One more big breath, inhale, and exhale. Step your right foot forward, drop your back heel. So you're coming into like a warrior two. So we'll just start there and do a warrior two. And reverse the warrior, reach up and back, and then take your right forearm on top of the right Thigh and just nudge it open. Reach your top arm up to the ceiling and then bicep over your ear as you continue to nudge that knee back, right? It's gonna wanna drop in to the midline, but we're really opening through for the hips here. So you don't have to keep dropping it in. We did a beautiful opener for the inner thighs. So here we are again, reaching, lengthening, Five more breath. If it's too much, you can take your arm down alongside you. If you need more, go ahead and turn it into a bind or a half bind for three. Release the toes, two. Nice, last one, inhale and exhale it out. Straighten the right leg, lift up with the left arm just for three. Now you're really opening through that inner thigh and the hamstrings, two and one. Good, let's come high plank. And we're gonna lower all the way down to the floor for a moment. Lower all the way down. And then take your hands behind you, tented fingers, tops of the feet on the floor to begin. Lift the chest up, lift it forward, then lift your feet off of the floor, hip width distance with the feet. Maybe you lift your arms. This builds strength in the back so that we don't have as much tension there because we're stronger. So our muscles are doing their job. Lift up a little more for five, four, good for three, two, and release cheek to one side. Maybe you bend your knees, sway them side to side. And then plant your hands, fingertips underneath your shoulders, legs long down the mat, lift up into cobra. So you keep a bend at the elbows, open through the chest, and then release it down. This next one, you can go up into cobra again, or upward facing dog. Your call, upward dog, your elbows are a little straighter. 
lift up through the chest. Big breath in, thighs are engaged, roll over your toes, downward facing dog. Big breath here. Long breath out. Inhale. Exhale. Engaging your core, last big breath, inhale. And exhale it out. Let's step that left foot forward. Back heel goes flat and or parallel to the back of the mat. You're coming into a warrior two for a touch. And then we're gonna move right into your parsva on this side. So left forearms on the top of the left thigh, right arm. Bicep is over your ear. This stretches through the deep hip flexors of the uh, left leg, but you're also getting a little stretch in gluteus medius, top of the right hip. Breathing here. Push through the outer edge of your back foot. Release the toes of the front foot and stay here for the last five. Or you can take that shoulder opener, sweeping your arm around for the bind. Maybe your hand drops down a little more. Pull your shoulder blades onto the wall behind you. Four more breath. Keep turning the right ribs to the ceiling. Open the toes. Lift the arch of the back foot, one more breath. Inhale and exhale, very good. High plank, lower down, low plank, upward dog, cobra. Downward facing dog, dropping it out. Spin your heels to the left and then feel how the right hip and the underneath the right armpit is stretching open. We'll then go through center and we'll go to the other side. Hip switch, Egyptian dog. Lift the hips. Open through the armpit. One more breath here, inhale. And exhale it out, very good. Come down onto your knees. And we're gonna do um, one more lunge pose. Here, I want your right foot forward. Your left knee is back at an angle, and you can have your hands on blocks if you like, um, or tented fingers, or you can be up. I'm gonna have mine on blocks. Drop the pelvis forward, drop the hips forward. This is opening up the left hip flexor. So when you feel this, you'll notice that you get a, um, a stretch through the left hip flexor. If you came off of the left knee, this stretch is just not as powerful. It's not as pronounced. So just work with what feels right. If it feels better to lift the knee off, please do. Otherwise, breathing here, keeping the right knee going forward. So don't nod out wide, not stuck in the middle. Just nice and plumb line with the hip bone. Two more breaths. Last big breath here, inhale. And then as you exhale, straighten out your right leg. Walk the blocks or your hands back, core stays engaged. Come onto the right heel, press your hips back. Right hip goes back, so you're opening through the right hamstring now. Mm, so good. Five more breaths. Last one, inhale. Nice, exhale, plant the right foot, bend the right knee, move the blocks up, roll over your back toes and walk your back foot up for pyramid pose. So you're peeling back through the right hip, both legs are straight, long spine. You can stay here, or you can draw, bridge your chest towards your leg. Drop your head and relax your forehead. Peel your shoulders away. Engage your right quadriceps so the right hamstring releases. Take another full breath, inhale. And then exhale, come on up to standing. Both legs lift to the ceiling, both arms lift to the ceiling. Show me the both legs lift up, I'd like to see that. Inhale, reach up. 
Very good. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, come to a high plank. Low plank, press through the balls of your feet. Upward dog, inhale, now tops of the feet on the floor. Exhale, downward facing dog. Shake your head side to side. And then step your left foot forward. Again, you can use blocks. You might need to rearrange them or tented fingers and then drop that right knee to the floor. So we're really getting into the meat of the matter here. You're lengthening your spine up out of the soil of your pelvis, but you're drawing your frontal hip bones forward. You're not over exploiting. We're not like just dropping into it. So there is definitely muscular contraction, but there's also a beautiful release in the right hip flexor. So feel for that, look for that. Lengthen your spine and open the collarbones. Three more breaths here. Last big breath, inhale and exhale. Peel your hips back, walk your hands back with your box and then you're coming into half Hanumanasana, Ardha Hanumanasana. You're on the heel of your left foot, toes point to the ceiling, kind of moving their way back towards the left knee. The more you peel back with the left hip, because it's going to want to move forward to get out of the stretch, but the more you commit it back, the more intense um, and in a way effective this stretch can be. But go at your own pace. You don't want to overdo it. You want to make your body trust you and know that you are trustworthy because, you know, let's face it, our society is not. So we're working hard at keeping ourselves whole and balanced. One more breath here. Inhale. And exhale, bend into the left knee, walk the blocks up, roll over your back toes, straighten out your front leg now and walk your back foot up. Heel to heel is the classic alignment. You're coming into pyramid pose and you're gonna pull back with that left hip. Long spine, stay here, engage the quadricep and work here, this is great. If you want more, you're gonna drop your forehead towards your leg and breathe here. Pull your tops of your shoulders away from your ears. Two more breath. Lengthen your spine. Place the block underneath your right hand forward. Walk your right foot up to meet the left. And we're going to come into Ardha Chandrasana, half moon on this side. So your right hand um, is under the block, your shoulder is above the wrist, but the whole contraption is over to the right of your right pinky toe. Then your left leg reaches behind you, you stack your hips. So it mimics what we did in the beginning in the Anahatasana. You're lifting up, except, you know, it's a balance pose, so it's a little more challenging. And if you come out of it, not a big deal, you just go back into it. Lift up a little more with your flying leg. Flying toes point towards your left knee. Open through the chest for three, two, and one. Good job. Come on up out of that. Let's go to the other side. Block in the left hand. When you put a block down, you get a chance to really engage your core. If your hand is all the way on the floor, it like shuts off the psoas, so it's harder actually to engage the core. If you come out of it, no biggie, go right back into your pose. Breathing, lifting the flying leg, stay with it. Lift up a little more, flex your toes for five. Good, turn your chest, four, three, Two, highest point now. Very good, both feet down. Come on up to standing, reach both arms up to the ceiling, inhale. And exhale, hands to your heart. Stand on your left foot. We're gonna come into balance pose of a standing figure four. So 
key here is to move your shin back. Don't let it push itself forward. Move it back. Right ankle past the left knee. And, oh yeah, right there. Can you feel that? Your hips moving back. You're really getting into that lateral rotator of the hips, the external rotator. Sit low, sit back for three. Lift the chest now, two, and one. Come on up to standing. Pick that right knee up with you. You can uh, keep the knee lining up with the hip or extend the leg long and turn to the right. For five, keep strengthening in the outer hip of your left side. Four, three, two, and one. Good job. Put that right foot down. Let's just switch sides. No fanfare. Here we go. Stand on the right foot. Left one up and across. Lateral rotator. Singing a song. Hopefully it's a good one. Press the shin back. Don't let it come forward. Your standing shin. Flex your left toes. Lift the chest. Two more breath. Find a durana, find the concentration durana, and then lift that left knee up. Wrap your right hand around it, or extend your left leg long and turn to the side. If you extend your left leg long, it's more challenging, and you're also opening the IT band on the outside of that left <clears throat> leg. Three more breath. Inhale. Keep twisting. Exhale, breath, press back through the right thigh now. Last big breath, inhale, very good. Exhale, both feet down, interlace your hands behind you, turn your toes in, lift your chest and forward fold right over your legs. Forward fold, shake your head side to side, side to side, letting it go. Hmm. One more breath, inhale, and exhale it out. Bend your knees, come on up to standing. Step to the top of your mat. Inhale, both arms up to the ceiling. Exhale, forward fold and down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank, low plank. Send your toes back, lift your chest, upward face and downward facing dog. Very good. Big breath here. Long breath out. Now I'm going to teach frog pose. Drop onto your knees. Um, if this is too much for you, I'll give you a modification. Um, I like to do frog with a blanket because it feels nicer on the inside of my knees. But what you do for frog is you can lean yourself forward, knees are out to the side, toes can, feet can be out like a frog, or uh, you can even point them in less like a, more like a tadpole. And then the knees go out and they widen away from one another. And then you can come down, you can stay on your arms. Classically, people come down to the forearms, but you gotta see what feels right for you. So it's a deep stretch for the inner groins, flexing your feet and you will get quite a release in the low back. And then this is one of those poses that you kind of marinate in, for lack of a better word. The more you let your body release into it and let the weight of your own pelvic bones soften and release the inner groins, the more benefit you receive from this pose. So just be there for the release. This shouldn't be uncomfortable on the knees. If it is, like I said, you can put the blanket. I'm actually gonna widen my blanket so that my knees have more of a cushy place. There's just not a whole lot of muscle or skin or anything at the inner knees. So for some of us, it just doesn't feel good. 
So go with what feels right for your body. Then you're moving your hips slightly back to intensify. Slightly back as if you're trying to put your sitting bones closer to your heels. At the same time, you can drop your uh, head towards something, either your hands or a block or a pillow so that your chest comes a little lower to the ground. And let's just take five more breaths here. You can use the bandhas, pull in from the perineum, lifting up here to create energetic lifts. Relax and soften your shoulders and your jaw. Last big breath. Inhale. And exhale it out. Walk yourself slowly. Pull yourself up. And bring your knees slowly in. They may not want to move, so you got to go slow. We're going to move into half pigeon, but you can take pigeon on your back again as we did earlier. So I'm just going to leave my blanket on the mat, but feel what works for you. You can roll onto your left toes, lift your right knee up, bring your right knee closer to your right wrist, and the left uh, wrist is li in line with the right ankle, and then draw that left toes back and down flex your right toes peel back with your right hip and then slowly you can lower yourself to your degree and again you're you know now we're back into that external rotator of the hips so we did some beautiful inner hip work and now we're letting the external hips release so oh, good. And, you know, hips are not a one-size-fits-all deal, you know, that is not the situation. And even within one body, each side can feel dramatically different. So just honor what you feel and allow yourself to be kind to you and offer yourself this beautiful moment of caring, not just with your body, but with your mind. With your mind, offer yourself reverence and respect. Three more breath here. Drawing back with that right hip a little bit more. And then walk your hands back to where your shoulders were. Lift your chest. Lift up, open through the chest. Roll over your back toes, come back into a high plank. You can move it into downward dog if that feels right for you. And then shoulders over your wrists and we're going to go the other side. So left knee is moving towards the left wrist. Left ankle lines up with the right wrist. Peel back through that whole right side, right foot, lengthening back down the mat. And then finding your home right here in this pose. We've spent a lot of time at home over the past several months. And, uh, you know, just finding a real comfort in our own skin. Where we can, we know we can weather the storms. We know we're fighters, we're survivors. We have been through a lot and we're stronger for it. So let your hips let go here as a way to say thank you, thank you hips, thank you body for seeing me through whatever physical, emotional, or spiritual situations I have found myself in. Thank you to our bodies, to our minds and our hearts and our spirits. another two full breath in.
And as you exhale that last breath, walk your hands up, upward dog in the chest. Feel how that stretches through the right hip flexor again. And then draw your back leg around to the front. You can take a yoga strap for this if you like and take it around your feet. You don't have to. I'm going to demo with it, but you don't have to. Take it around the outer seam of your feet and you draw yourself forward as such or you just place your hands on your feet. If your knees are up, grab a block or something and you know get a little support in there because the whole name of the game is to love ourselves exactly where we are. Okay, you guys, with whatever broken, bruised, stuck, tight, joyful, happy, buoyant, enthusiastic, you name it. So give yourself that chance today to really make those physical and emotional inroads. Here we are in Baddha Konasana, five more breaths. Get your spine nice and long, shoulder blades, Press in, shoulder, tops of your shoulders move down the back. Hmm, you're gonna feel good, let's go. Here we go, let's lie onto our backs. Pull your knees into your chest. And if you like, you can take a half happy baby or a full happy baby. Happy baby, just make sure that your lowest part of your back is on the mat. Just five breath. Press your hands into your feet and your feet into your hands. And then draw your knees into your chest. Place your feet on the floor. Use a block or a blanket. Lift your hips and put the lowest, the block at the lowest setting right underneath your lowest part of your back, your sacrum, not the roundy, um, bendy lumbar part, but the sacrum. And then lift your legs up to the ceiling, arms out to the side. Breathing here, Viparitti Karani. It's a very beautiful cooling posture. Letting your bones relax into the mat. Letting everything just drop. And then if you want, if you're in this pose and you're like, whoa, that is my signature Shavasana, then bend your knees, lift your hips, take the block over to the wall and do this at the wall. If you're like, this is cool, but I want to just like a chiller Shavasana um, where I'm just lying flat, then that's cool. I'm going to teach that. So choose what works for you. Pull your knees into your chest, place your feet on the floor, lift your hips up. So you take the blocks off. Then place the blocks at the lowest setting. There we are, second block. And put your heels on them, on the blocks. And your toes go out, your knees go out, your hips go out. And if you still have a blanket with you, you can roll it up to make yourself a little pillow you like or not and then arms come down alongside you and this is a very subtle inversion it's a subtle lift of the legs to help the heart rate decelerate a little bit so we can come into the fullness of this moment, relaxing into this moment. And with so much gratitude for you on your journey, you're doing a great job. I'd like to encourage you to rest here for a few more minutes. I'm gonna sign off right now and say namaste and thank you.